Hi everybody, this is Bob, N8RS, and uh, I made, uh, I don't know, I made uh, quite a few uh, videos here, and uh, I was working on this uh, model 986 MFJ antenna tuner, the uh, differential T tuner, and uh, anyhow I thought that uh, maybe I should uh, make a video on this, because uh, uh, what I found here was quite interesting. Uh, any MFJ equipment that you get, or let's put it this way, any equipment that you get through the mail or shipped by a freight or whatever, uh, they get vibrated a lot in that while they're in the trucks and all. And you don't know exactly how tight the people tighten up the nuts and bolts. And so uh, on this one here, um, I, I got it, uh, I don't know, about a month ago or so and uh, started working on it here just cleaning it up and checking it out and uh, it needed the uh, drive belt here first of all and I was really pleased I got on the phone and I called MFJ and I told the guy there that I needed uh, a couple of these drive belts I got a spare when I got this one and he said why well, sure and he had the part number and all they were not terribly expensive I think they were two dollars and something a piece I don't remember exactly but uh, anyhow they got here like in three or four days which was really nice so then I started working on this thing and I opened it up and I found a couple of these screws up here that were very very loose a couple of them I could take off with my fingers uh, I also found uh, some of those underneath you see there are things that are fastened here like this right here there's a screw that comes up from the bottom underneath I found some of those were loose too uh, all together I found eight screws that were just what I call finger tight uh, that I had to tighten up so I tightened them all and you can see here that I've put little dabs of red nail polish on here uh, many many years ago uh, I was working on a piece of surplus equipment and on that surplus equipment they had put a dab of red paint on all of the soldered connections and all the screws and bolts and I spoke to my friend who had been in the military W9EPT Don Smith and he said why yeah Bob he said uh, some of that military gear they check it out very thoroughly and when they solder a connection they put a little dab of red paint on it and uh, also on the screws and the bolts so that indicates that this has been inspected and it was checked to see that they were nice and tight and that the solder connections were correct and all he said a piece of military gear that goes in an aircraft you know it's very critical and a loose connection or a loose nut and bolt could really cause trouble so anyhow that's uh, that's and so I got that idea from that and so what I did here is I had a a bottle of red uh, nail polish my wife had given me for that purpose and so you can see here where I've dabbed those with red I had this little circuit board out and I, I, I have also a bottle of white nail polish <laughs> and I looked for the red and I think I'd used all the red up so I just put a dab of white on those but I find that that stuff comes loose quite easy when you want to take it out so that's not a problem there but it does hold the nuts and the bolts securely when you dab them like that uh, another thing I found on this was the coax connectors. The center of the coax connectors in those was uh, was spread out and you can take a very small screwdriver and you can get in there behind the edges of that center and you can see there I'm prying it right in right there uh, and you can pry that center part in a little bit smaller so that they fit better because they will eventually reach the point where you got a loose connection there so that's what you can do with those and, uh, and that helps to keep your uh, coax connectors connecting like they're supposed to and let's see what I've what else I've got on here um, and uh, oh another thing I did on this unit here you can see I extended the leads the wire leads that go to the meter area uh, there's uh, what one two three there's six of them here and I extended them all I just cut little four inch pieces of uh, stranded thin wire same size as what they had in here but I didn't have the colors all I had was blue so anyhow and then I put a small piece of uh, heat shrink over each joint I just made simple U joints you know bent the wires like that uh, hooked them on each other, squished them down, and then soldered them, and then slid the uh, heat shrink over and shrunk them down with the heat gun. 
I got a heat gun here that I got at Harbor Freight. I think it was $9.95. Does the job great. I've had it for several years. Uh, anyway, so I extended those. Why did I extend those? Well, because you can't get this front panel off of here and do anything with the little short wires that they had on there. And what they were doing was they were soldering and unsoldering and soldering and unsoldering these wires here as you see me poking with my thumb uh, on these meters. Another thing I found out was they've put these meters in with hot melt glue, with a hot melt glue gun. And after a couple of years or more, this stuff starts cracking. So some of you guys may just find that your meter falls loose and is laying inside. Uh, that happened on this one here. And so uh, when I put it back in, I glued it back in with E6000 glue. I really like that stuff. The E6000 glue you can buy at many, many places. I see they have it at some of the dollar stores now. The uh, Dollar General here uh, near me has got the E6000. I have nothing to do with the E6000 company, but I do like their product and I use it a lot. Also something you should know about E6000, if you're working on coils and you want some coil dope to glue a coil, the E6000 works great. That stuff will not affect the inductance of a coil even while it's still wet. It's really some good stuff for that. So I use it a lot in my electronics work. And uh, get this, uh, this box here out of the way. I hope I'm not jiggling the camera around too much. Okay, now cleaning this inductor. I cleaned it with a microfiber cleaning cloth that I bought at the auto store and I use 91% rubbing alcohol. I am bouncing around here with this camera, I know. But here's what I used right here. 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol to clean the coil. You want to use the 91% instead of the 70%. The 70% will leave deposits on the coil and you don't want to put any kind of lubrication on the coil because what happens is the lubrication will attract dust and dirt once you get dust and dirt and then the roller runs over that dust and dirt then it, when you transmit through it then you got an arcing that happens and then you got little pits and spots in the coil so don't put anything lubrication on the uh, on the coil there i did put a tiny tiny just minuscule amount of uh, molybdenum disulfide. Molybdenum disulfide. That is that black uh, grease, uh, high pressure grease that they use in cars. And uh, you see rubbing my finger back and forth on there, I just got a little bit on there and <laughs> that's hardly any more than I put on. So uh, I put a little bit of that on there. Uh, just on where, that's just to lubricate this roller on this shaft nothing on this part and uh, what else I guess that's it I sprayed a little bit of uh, contact cleaner on the switch back there the contact cleaner I'm using is from the auto department at Walmart CRC contact cleaner and you buy a you buy a great big can of that uh, and it's very inexpensive so that's why I use that and that's where I get it and let's see if we have anything else on our list here. Uh, guess that's it. On these meters, let me go back to the meter for just a second. On these meters, you can see that I installed a couple of uh, LEDs in the back of the meter here. Uh, I really don't recommend that. It's too easy to get little chips and things into the meter. I d actually t used a very small soldering iron tip, this one right here to melt those holes through the back of the meter. The idea is that melting them through the back, uh, the plastic is in a liquid state and kind of folds back around the edges when you poke it through and does not fall into the meter. If I was to drill that, that could really cause problems. So here's, you see right here, there's the negative leads of the, uh, of the LEDs. Here's the negative lead right here and this goes to the negative lead here. And then on this side over here, on the other side, comes up to here, and I've got 1,000 ohm resistors. You can see that one right there. So 1,000 ohm resistor on that uh, white LED gives you a current of 10 mils, which gives you plenty of brightness, and the LED ought to last for a long, long time since it's rated at 20 milliampers. 
Okay, now what else was I talking about here? Uh, the glue on the meter. Yes, the glue on the meter. I'm talking about the glue that glues the meter in here, but also they use that same glue to glue this back onto the front. So what happened? All right, so my meter came loose and was laying inside. So I opened it all up and I glued it here with the E6000. And I did not put a big gob. I put a glob here and a glob here underneath, right there and there. I put it on the meter edge and put it in there. You don't want to put too much or you're going to have that stuff running on the meter face and you don't want that. Anyhow, so then I put it back together. Well, then the back fell off. Well, the back is glued in here and here. Each corner's got a glob. So I put the meter back in. Then when I put the meter back in, I didn't get the uh, little adjustments on the meter lined up correctly. And one of them didn't adjust. So then I had to take it back out again, which I did before the glue was really hard. But uh, <laughs> I should have checked it first. I should have put it in gently without any glue, then check the meter adjustments in the front. When I speak of the meter adjustments, I'm talking about those right here that go through the front panel for zeroing the meter. One of them didn't work, so then I had to take it apart again. All right, and you can see how nicely that works with the extensions on the wires. You can take this and you can lay it down and you can work on things. And I also put this little bit of uh, this is just some pieces of solid hookup wire here, some scraps, about three or four inches long, two of them here, and those just keep that in one bundle so that it doesn't get all over the place. And you want to be careful, you don't want to have it get anywhere near to this capacitor which is going to be running RF voltages. So you want to keep that away, keep this away from this right here. So anyways, so then I put my globs of glue on there. Uh, there's a little glob on the edge here, a little glob on the edge there, a little bit here, a little bit there, all around to hold it all together. So uh, I just thought I'd mention all about that meter since that was such a consternation for me, uh, causing me problems. <laughs> and uh, I had to take it apart like three times before I got the meter all straightened out. And I guess that's it. So that's the whole list there. Be sure that you, and, I, and what I have down here, the last item here, first item on the list I have is loose hardware. Tighten the hardware. Last item I've got on the list, loose hardware. Tighten the hardware. You know, if you're making a speech or something, you want to tell the people your first thing, what you, uh, what you really want to bring across to them, the main point, and then bring your main point in again right at the end. And I guess that's it. So uh, I'll say 73s here, guys. And uh, yeah, you can work on these things. Just be slow and careful and uh, don't get in a rush. So that's it, 73s and good DX.